So I hope everyone's back. Welcome back, guys. Good afternoon to one and all. This is Ritwik from Team Bios, your host for this afternoon's sessions. So next up, we have a very informative session on dynamic instrumentation presented by our speakers, Nishan Ji and Akshay Jain, both of whom are security researchers in cyber security industry. Mr. Nishant here has reported vulnerabilities in companies like Apple, AT&T, Microsoft, Dell, and Juul with CVs and zero days. He was also a speaker at PhD Days 2021. His areas of interests are mobile application security, exploit development, and red teaming. We welcome you, Nishant. And our second speaker, Mr. Akshay Jain, again, is an eminent researcher who has found and reported multiple vulnerabilities in Adobe, Apple, HP, Google, with multiple CVs and acknowledgements. He was also a speaker at PhD Days 2021. He's interested in application security and reverse engineer. We welcome you too, Akshay. So over to you, speakers. All the very best. Thanks, Hey, guys. Okay. Uh, so yeah, guys, let's start. First of all, I'm really excited to, to speak at the uh, NCTF conference. Uh, is my slides visible? Or oh, Nishant, are you sharing? Uh, just a second. Ritwik, is the screen sharing on for me? Yeah, even One for second. me, it's, yeah, even for me, it's visible. Yeah, Ritwik is just available. So hey guys, uh, super excited to uh, speak at the in NCTF conference. Uh, hope you all all are doing good. So yeah. So who are we? So uh, so my name is uh, Akshay Akshay Jain. I work at Phonepay as a security engineer. I reported multiple vulnerabilities in Fortune 500 companies. And Nishant Guna works as a security consultant as uh, at 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 MBSec. Uh, he does. He does web and the mobile application security, and then and there's his interest are in are in red teaming and the and exploit dev, development also. So today we have so today we will be talking about the uh, dynamic in, instrumentation. What is dynamic instrumentation? What is what is what is the what is the FIDA framework? What are the different modes of the FIDA? And then we will be talking about what is a uh, Certificate pinning and then the certificate uh, un, un, unpinning. We will be talking about how to how to hook, hook into 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 Windows Windows API because uh, because hooking into in, into mobile APIs it's it's quite it's quite easy when compared to the compared to the Windows Windows API. We will be facing the API API call calls with some. With some inbuilt inbuilt modules to present present in the present in the FIDA framework on 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 how we can on, on how we can call that particular API call hook 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 in, 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 into it change change some values and then we'll talk about some 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 good FIDA FIDA mod, modules and then the references uh, references which are which are which are present and. And yeah, uh, so basically, what is the uh, so 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 first of all, we need to understand what what all things can be can be done <laughs> done 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 in the in the in the FIDA. First is the most most basic basic one one which is bypassing SSL pinning and then the root detection in the in the in in, in the mobile applications. SSL pinning can be easily by bypassed since. Since it's just it's just mostly boolean 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 checks present in the in the in the application where we just have to find the the correct uh, the correct memory uh, memory layer or the or the or or the function name to 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 hook and then and then either replace the the hashes or the or 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 the written 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 value. Same goes with the root root de detection. Also, also in the in the in the mobile applications, root detection can be can be easily easily bypassed if it's if it's if it's present present on the on the on the Java level. But 
but if, but if it's present on the on the on the ASO file, then also it can be it can be easily easily by by bypass. We just need to find the correct correct function and then and then and then hook hook into it and then and then and then change the uh, change the return return values or 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 maybe make sure that 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 function never never gets gets called called and um, and then dumping in 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 memory keys such as such as, such as passwords, private keys, application specific secrets. So we can use FIDA to 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 dump memory keys and then the and then the so sometimes passwords are pre -pre present in the in the in the in in the processes. Sometimes sometimes we have we have we have seen open 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 as a SSL binaries uh, pre -pre present present in the in the in 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 the application itself itself so 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 this frameworks makes it makes it easy easy for for us to for us to hook hook into those those particular frameworks dump the dump the private keys private private keys and and if the application is 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 using some sort of uh, crypt, crypt, cryptography then we can dump their uh, secrets and then and then and then and then understand how the how the particular crypto cryptography function function works. Frida can 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 also be used to trace um, trace trace malware or, and then and then how it actually how it actually works on the on the on on the OS what all what all what all APIs 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 does it does it does it use what all what all APIs it 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 doesn't we can we can always we can always hook hook into the SSL SSL read and write, write functions to 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 understand what are the what are the command and the and the control 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 servers uh, de de obfuscate it. Uh, and yeah, various things. Um, so, so what is dynamic instru inst instrumentation? It's uh, it's 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 just the method through uh, through which through which we are we are actually modifying uh, modifying the 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 inst instructions of the of the executable during the run runtime. We can uh, we can uh, we can we can modify the function name. We can we can. We can we can make sure that that function never gets called. We can we can we can we can use it to um, we can we can use dynamic instrumentation to to perform reverse reverse engineering and engineering uh, expert development, software quality assurance, debugging. So, for example, if 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 the application has has some sort of string obfuscation present in the mobile application, then we can definitely reverse it. See, 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 see if the keys, key, key, keys to 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 de decrypt it are present in the memory or not, and then make sure to to uh, to to decrypt the uh, the these strings. Uh, these uh, these instrumentation frame frameworks can be can can get attached attached to the binary and then we can debug the application when it's when it's running we can even debug it during the early early uh, early inst instrumentation time we can we can uh, we can we can we can hook hook into api and then we can we can we can we can print the methods which are which are being used we can print the variables and then and then and and then we can even modify the arguments which are being passed to that particular API, API, API to alter the execution flow, or 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 just to understand understand what is what is what is what is getting 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 being being passed. And and this can be done on 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 any any platform. We just we just we just we just have to have the dynamic. Uh, instrumentation tool hook into the process id or the executable which is running on that platform so yeah uh, so first of all uh, what is what is frida frida is a dynamic instrumentation toolkit which allows us to inject snippets of of javascript into 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 native native applications these native applications can be anything uh, android ios or or even or even or or even windows or the or the or the linux applications ce applications so installing uh, frida is 
is super simple. All we all we have to do is pip three install pida pida tools and 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 there you go. You are you are ready. You know, and 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 it's and it supports uh, it supports Node, Python, SIP bindings are 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 already are already present present and and these are fully 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 supported. Uh, so 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 it has the, the embedded embedded mode mode also where you can where you can run the where you can run the feed feed agent agent on on the on the different 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 device and then you can connect 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 through that port from your local machine you can you can you can use feed portal to actually do do that yeah so what are the uh, the various tools which are which we currently see in the in the feda instrumentation framework so first of all we have the code code coverage tool called lighthouse lighthouse is is really powerful tool when it comes to uh, when it comes to reverse reverse in engineering huge huge windows windows binaries because 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 it it provides us Code coverage, code coverage with 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 x x references. It 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 actually currently supports only 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 IDA and the and the and the binary binary ninja. Second, we have lib lib a a a f l lib a f l has has recently uh, started to to support uh, Frida and then and then. And then we can use libafl to 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 perform various fuzzing related operations, and and next we have uh, for for security assessments we have the tools called Passion Fruit, which is extremely powerful tool 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 to 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 perform operations with uh, iOS iOS applications specifically, and then there's this this tool called Objection Objection by by Sense by Sense Boots. Post company, it's it's again really power, powerful tool. If you are if you are if you are working with the Android and the and the and the iOS applications, next we have um, next we have per, Permion. Uh, it's it's sort of like a FIDA ID. I I would I would say it, it's again amazing amazing tool. Uh, and and next we have House by by NCC Group. Uh, it's uh, it's again, it's again used 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 for the Android and the and the iOS mobile application Fantas. It it makes the life a, a, a lot a lot easier. Yeah. So 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 Frida also 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 comes in, comes up with its with its with its own with its own 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 set of set of tools like like for example Frida. Frida 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 P P S and Frida, Frida Discover, Frida Kill, Frida Trace, Frida LS, LS, LS devices. Frida, Frida, Frida PS will just list down all the processes, processes which are which are run, running, running. Frida, 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 Frida Trace will will be actually used for dynamically tracing the, the function calls. All all we have to do is uh, pro provide the provide the method or the or the or the API. API and then and then it will automatically create the uh, handlers handlers hand, handlers folder folder with the with the with the dummy Frida uh, snippets uh, Frida Frida discover uh, is, is it it is a it is a it is a tool for 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 discovering internal internal functions functions but uh, but it, but it has to be used used with uh, with 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 Frida, Frida trace trace only. Frida LS 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 devices. It's it's just it's just used for um for for listing down the uh, the the devices where, which are which are which are present in your in in your infra in infra structure. Frida kill Frida kill can be can be can be can be used to can be used to kill a particular for particular process ID and then and then attach to attach to it whenever whenever that particular process gets spawned later to 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 achieve early early instrumentation. Yes. Okay. 
uh, thanks for the introduction akshay uh, introduction about frida now uh, <clears throat> now that we have a basic understanding of what uh, frida does what is dynamic instrumentation i'm just going to quickly talk about what modes of operation frida has then we are going to see some of the demos and uh, also practically see how how we can use on a free, how we can use frida on a binary or executable on windows right so with modes of operation frida has like three modes which are different from each other and also serves a different purpose so the first one the injection mode is basically the javascript engine the gumjs engine it gets injected as a shared library to the process or a existing uh, process id and you can hook into the api calls and all that from the injection mode embedded is uh, something which we will be using heavily in mobile applications when we use freda so the way this works is that uh, we have the freda server in our mobile devices and from the local machine we can connect to the freda server and try to operate commands on top of that we also have a demo for <clears throat> showing this uh, freda server client how to install and how to basically use freda in mobile device uh, later and also the last mode preload is basically very useful when you just need the you just have the library uh, of the frida library and you can just attach it using methods like ld preload in in terms of linux or pyld in some libraries in terms of mac os you can just provide the dot uh, so file and call the function or call the executable which you want to hook into and the dynamic library will be automatically executed and attached and executed to the process so these are the three modes so modes basically these modes we can use in various ways and it can be helpful in various different scenarios right so and next we are just going to check a process in the in uh, in my windows machine and we are going to see how we can instrument it how we can how we can check what is the process what what are the exports in the process what are the functions running what are the libraries running and so on right and also later we are just going to see how to in a black box approach how to just trace functions how to see what is happening just using frida trace and how we can back trace the api calls what's happening what is getting printed what is getting hooked and so on right so i have my uh, windows setup here and i'm running powershell in this window and one more window i'm just i just have a terminal ubuntu terminal which is run based on wsl windows subsystem for linux so let's just try to hook into this process and see what are the functions or libraries or whatsoever so to hook into the process of uh, wsl the first thing we should need is the so basically we should need the pid or the process id which is this number 22632 or you can also you can also uh, spawn the frida framework using the name of the process which is wsl.exe in this case right there is also a different way uh, in which you can for so this is a process which is already running in my system say you want to run frida on top of a process and like you want to start the process and immediately attach frida to that we can use it with minus f flag so basically it will be something like frida minus f c uh, so basically what we are doing here we are calling frida here and minus f is to forcefully start the specific executable or this specific application which is notepad in our case right so <clears throat> when we run this frida is going to look into this specific folder and it has started the process notepad.exe and all we have to do is slash resume <clears throat> and we can see notepad has started in the system this process has been started in the system so this is to just forcefully start uh, an application and when we uh, 
terminate the process, we can see that we get a message, error message saying that the process has been terminated. And also the framework, data framework, we got exited from it. Now let's just connect to this uh, this specific process. For example, Frida minus P and the process ID, two, just two, two, six, three, two. Right? Now we are in the, uh, now we are in the console of Frida where we can, where we can run <coughs> Frida specific commands on, on here. So the first thing I'm gonna check is, what is the process ID which we are into? Right. So process dot ID, which is the command to print the process ID, it, it prints 22632, which is the same process which we which we hooked into here, right? Same process. Now the next thing why I want to check, I want to see this process uh, WSL.exe. What are the modules which are there? By modules, I mean what is the executable name, what is the Libraries, what are the shared libraries, what is getting called or getting dynamically generated and attached to the process and so on. So to do that, similarly, we can do process dot enumerate modules, right? Modules and sync. This is a function. So we're just giving back at the end. So once we do that, we can, <clears throat> We can see that there is a process, uh, there is a module named w, uh, wsl.exe, which is the process we hooked into. And we can see there are multiple DLL files. There is an empty DLL which got attached. DLL are nothing but libraries uh, which are Windows specific. So there is a empty DLL which got attached, kernel 32 got attached. There is a DLL called kernel base and so on, right? There are a lot of other, other DLLs also which got attached. Along with that, we also have the path of the library, where exactly the library is residing in your system, in our system, and also the base address and what is the size of the whole library which got attached, right? So if we see, uh, if we see here, we also can see there is a Frida agent dot DLL which got attached, which is in this specific folder. So. From this, we can understand that when we started the process, when we attach the process, the Frida agent or DLL file, with it got attached to the process and it is basically dynamically, dynamically instrumentating on the process and the commands which you run on top of this specific process, it is from this specific DLL or this specific li shared library. And since this Frida agent got attached, we are able to trace the functions and so on, right? Now, now we have an understanding of what are all the modules which got exported. The next next thing I want to check is that what is the what what are the functions inside a specific module? Like what is getting called? What is the function and so on? To <clears throat> to do that, like we can do module, we can run module dot enumerate imports sync again, which is a function. But here we should be giving the name of the process or name of the module which we saw here. So I'm just going to take the wxl.exe which we saw earlier. wxl.exe, right. So when we run this here, so. <clears throat> Yeah, after we run this, we have a lot of different uh, results and we can see there is a function called init term.e from this specific module, right? And along the along with the address of this. Similarly, we can see there is a function called cxit, right? There are multiple other functions. Let's just let's just check what is getting imported with the Frida agent as well. So we can see that Frida agent functions, there are multiple functions called as well at SID, report event, the register event source, get user name, and so on. So our end goal here is to just hook into one of these functions and either print the value of the values of this function 
or modify the execution flow here so so that uh, you know if uh, ss pending uh, in the mobile application is returning that there is ssl pending is enabled so what we can do is just with the this finding out which function we want to hook into and hooking into that function we can disable pending overall by changing the return value of the function if it is in boolean value right so these these two are the uh, important or very basic and first commands we are going to uh, try it out when we want to hook into a process and see what's happening behind the hood right now the next thing uh, the next thing what we have here we also have a demo to do what is a, what a place of a function right so like we saw earlier we have we have something called frida trace so with this method which we saw just now we have to manually hook into the process manually see what are the exports and so on but what if you have a specific library which you want to hook into or what if you want to hook into all the all the functions all the exports which are getting called by called by frida so for that what we can use is we can use frida trace and and along with the process id and the next thing we can give a function name for example i'm just going to give star here because i want to hook into or place all the functions right so now it says that it's So when we run uh, Frida trace two to three six three two minus i to tell Frida trace where or which function I want to hook into, what Frida does is basically it creates handlers. See if you see the lo uh, location of the set is and see users user handler something dot dll something dot js. So this got generated. This tab got generated by Frida automatically, and on the left you can see there is a function called name, right? RPC test cancel, RPC binding create. There are so many, so many functions which got called by Frida, uh, which got which got created by this Frida stub so that if that function gets called, we are going to get a notification saying that okay, this function got called by the system or the application which we are trying to use. So <clears throat> this demo, uh, just a second. So here uh, we can see that um, in, in the demo, um, we can see that we are running Frida trace on a process and we are trying to trace this specific function called reg, reg open key, e, uh, key exw, which is a, uh, which is a API call provided by windows to check if a registry editor or if a registry key has been opened by any function or by any application we're just tracing for this specific process reg open key xw and we can see that there are three handlers which got created and on the next next message we can see that started tracing for three functions right now that this specific process so so this specific process is using reg open exw uh, api we can see that in uh, after after the tracing got started we can see that these specific function calls along with what time it happened and what is the time delay between multiple function calls gets printed gets printed on the screen so this is very uh, this is a straightforward way of just hooking into an api call and just seeing if that api call is you know getting traced or if it is getting executed by a program at what time it is getting executed and so on so using this method we can see what are all the apis present in the system and once we get a target for what we need to hook or what we need to do from free data trace we, what we can do is we can hook into that api and change the return value or dump the arguments and so on 
<coughs> so for the next demo, uh, we have something similar. <coughs> we have something similar to what we saw earlier, but here what we are trying to do is that. Sorry, just a second. Yeah, what what we're trying to do is that we're just trying to hook into wsl.exe and see basically print all the arguments or print hex dump all the data which is getting uh, sent in wxc.exe. I'm I'm just going to run the run this program for uh, run the video first, then we'll get to see we'll see we'll see what what happened and how it happened and so on. First, we're just printing out the process ID for WXL, WSL.exe, and we are attaching it with Frida minus P5124, which is the process running on this side, right? And we are running a script on Frida. So here, 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 what we are doing is we are running a set of commands on on this specific process. To achieve what we want, we I'll just get to explain what this command does, what what the script does, uh, in in a bit. So now on this process which we have hooked into on this terminal, WSL, we can see that I've run a command called SSH root at one twenty seven zero zero one with the password pass at one two three four, right? Now here in in the place where we ran Frida. We can clearly see that there is a lot of dump which happened and terminal console dump and there is a lot of hex data and so on which has got printed and if we see here where it is where it is highlighted we can see that the command which we ran on wsl ssh root at 127001 minus p pass at one two three it got dumped so whatever data which gets printed which got it's got executed in the wsl.exe. It has got uh, dumped, and we also got the error message saying that connect to host 127001, but failed. Next, we're just going to run a ls minus la on a folder, and we can see we can see that this specific commands output along with the command ls minus la downloads tmp, it got dumped by freedom. Right. So this is the script which I had used for the earlier uh, earlier program. So it, it is a very ba basic and simple script. We are just writing a JavaScript function. Uh, we are just generating or we are creating a JavaScript variable called mod and we're doing module.export by name, which we just saw. And I want to, I since I know that write file API is the one which I want to hook into, I'm just giving module.getExport by name and write file. So next, in the next line, I'm going to just attach interceptor, which is a module or module you can say by Frida, which intercepts the process and stops the process from executing and waits until we tell Frida to okay, go on and execute the process or dump the value and so on. And intercept intercepted.attach and where we want to intercept is that the write file API call. So to understand this better, I would say write file is an API provided by Windows, which is used pretty much everywhere, I would say, in terminal console buffers or file systems. If you if you create a file called say temp.txt or secret.txt, write file will be called so that uh, that file gets that file gets uh, into in your system. So after write file is called, the file will get executed. So if we hook into write file, we can see multiple things like console buffers or what files got generated, what files got uh, started in the system and so on. And, and next we're just uh, creating, a, I mean, starting a JavaScript function called on enter. So basically mm -hmm. when this, when we are entering into write file, we just want to call the fun function along with the arguments, whatever it is getting passed. And we're just doing a console.log, which logs all the data, which is a standard JavaScript function, along with 
uh, with with some with something like terminal console dump and we are just calling this function called hex dump along with the argument argument number one. So write file argument number one is basically the content and argument number zero is the file path and so on. So to to see this, we can just go on Microsoft documentation of APIs and see what is the first argument, what is the second argument and so on. It's it's pretty detailed out there. And hex dump, it's basically dumps the whole hex data of whatever function we are passing on. So we're just dumping the whole hex of this specific write file when it is called, when it is entered inside. And we're just going to print argument one, which is the content or which is the content which executed or the commands which executed by the application. So this was one uh, basic example on how we can hook into Frida and print or dump the data. Similarly, we can also, what we can do is we can just modify the values as well. Like for example, if pending is returning to be false, we can true, for example, what we can do is we can just change the true to false and bypass SSL pending. Similarly with root detection, if the application is saying that, okay, my this phone is rooted, do not run it. We can, we can just change the argument value to it's, it's not rooted and the application will still work fine in our systems. So we are over to, to Akshay. So, yeah, so we can, so for, so for using Frida on, on the, on the mobile devices, especially uh, Android. So what we can do is uh, we can download the Frida server uh, uh, to come for the, for the, uh, for the phone on which, on which we want to, on, want to run it. And then, and then we can just, just push the binary on, onto the, onto the, onto the phone onto the phone and then and then and then and then we can we can we can place it place it somewhere for example data local temp or or or, or to some any any directory we, we want we can we have to we have to su su supply it 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 with the proper per, per permissions then only we can actually run the Frida server and and then yeah and then yeah we are we are good to good to go with the Frida server. Uh, sorry for the interruption Akshay. Uh, a gentle yeah. reminder that we're running a little out of time. Thank you for your cooperation. Okay sorry. Yeah. Okay so yeah uh, so this is just a small demo of of how we can actually use Frida on mobile devices. Sure. So, so here we are. We are just listing down the process ID, which is which is which is being used, and the process architecture on, on on which it is it is it is running, and then we will be uh, en enumerating the 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 current 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 thread on on which the process is running, and then we will be enum enumerating the modules uh, as we have as, as we have seen previously, previously, yeah. So, uh, so, so one of the use cases which we have seen, what is uh, uh, to to bypass certificate pinning on the on the on the Android applications, specifically as I as I've said, it's 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 generally boolean boolean checks only. So, so for this script, we can we can actually see that we are hooking into a a function called com data theory. Android task training dot okay host hostname verifier and then we are just 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 over over overloading that particular method and then we are threatening it 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 to to it to true to bypass the to bypass the pinning which is which is being performed uh, on the on the on the on the mobile mobile application M mobile application yeah. Yeah, thank you guys. Sorry, we ran out of time. So these are some of the uh, reference reference documents which you guys can 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 refer to for 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 maybe further learning on to on if you guys are interested. Yeah, thank you guys.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Nishant and Mr. Akshay. Thanks, Ritwik. Thanks for hosting. For the insightful presentation. Thank you again for joining us today.